you said that this space is unregulatable. Could you um, maybe touch on that a little bit more? I, I recently had a, a debate with a friend about the, you know, the, uh, the billionaires and their influence on the, the space industry. Um, and his position was something along the lines of, yeah, it's, it's great, it's, it's all positive, as long as some sort of regulation can be imposed at some future point. Um, and I'm not bringing this up just to just to elaborate my debate with my friend, but I thought it was quite an interesting point that you said that space is unregulatable. So if you could maybe touch on that a little bit more, because uh, this is something that I personally am maybe not too aware of. Space is unregulatable right now. Hmm. Um, that doesn't mean that it will be in the future, okay. um, because, well, who has things out in space that can verify the claims that we're making? If I fly something into orbit and it fails in some way, uh, I can, if I fly something into space right now and it fails in some way, the only proof that an insurer has hmm that it failed the way that it did, that I say that is that, sorry, let me go back here. Um, there's very few modes of verifying what happens in space right mm -hmm. now. We do a lot of forensic analysis. Uh, we do a lot of estimation and propagation based on historical data. And that isn't changing very quickly. We are, even if we, start deploying scout vision systems today. Well, we have a scout vision system in orbit now uh, that we're using to prepare for two to four missions in 2022, okay. um, providing us a lot of data on that. Right now, the data that we get from that is still fundamentally historical data. We might gather it in the future, but we'll project that data forward and estimate what things are gonna look like um, if it's not high enough fidelity. Mm -hmm. If we say that something failed, in a particular way, there's very, very few ways for someone to verify that it actually failed that specific way. Hmm. We just have to take people's words on it. And we have no secondary or tertiary verification modes. We either see a dot of light or if it got hit by a space rock and turned into a cloud of debris, a more diffused dot of light hmm. or a bunch of little dots of light that are now going different directions. But did it get hit by a rock? that we just couldn't see before, or did something explode? Mm -hmm. Or did someone shoot it? That is really, really tough. And that's where it gets a little bit into geopolitics and yeah. the, um, you know, the, the premise of strategic stability. We can't have a stable environment where we can't check each other's yeah. work. It's unregulatable, whether it is a hyper you know, billionaire or a country, because the UN Office for Outer Space Affairs can create regulations and they can state a lot of things, but that regulatory perspective, well, it's not necessarily actionable without someone going out and, and, and checking people's work, making mm -hmm. sure that they're mm -hmm. doing it that way. We can go to people's control centers and we can look through their data, whatever they'll provide us. And that data is still degrees of separation away from reality. It's problematic, not just for everyone else, except for you, but also you. Yeah. Because if something goes wrong on your satellite, all you know is that this power delivery system is throwing you wonky readings or the resistance might be a little bit off. But you don't know if that's because a solar proton punched through a processor or because uh, an alien took a bite out of your solar panel or because you actually are having like a leak somewhere. Yeah. Um, and that leak specifically through a jet of like, you know, acidic propellant to melt, a, you know, melt something on a board. You don't know these things specifically because you can't see it. Mm -hmm. When I lost my satellite in 2017, my biggest statement that I kept coming back to, you know, if only I had a picture of this thing, I would know exactly what happened to it. Mm. But there was no way to do that. And so, I think that my answer to why is it unregulatable is, is a different angle of attack on it than I think what you and your friend were talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's, it's just a matter of checks and balances only exists, only exist if there are checks and we can't check anything right now. We can just guess. 
super clear uh very interesting and and super clear uh but yeah you did say that this would be possible in in the future at some point right uh, i would assume if there's more of these kinds of um yeah uh checking satellites or or we have better telescopes or we have more sensors on these spacecraft that are able to you know feedback information to us as to what exactly is going on um, and I'm sure there's a number of other ways of, of having these regulatory bodies actually seeing what is happening out there in space in order to uh, enforce these kinds of regulations that I'm sure will be coming um, as time goes on. Scout has deployed the first kind of commercial uh, capability, like on a dedicated system mm -hmm. to do this uh, work. And right now it's still very early, but uh, we are accelerating rapidly to do it and on our roadmap is not just space situation awareness and knowledge about where things are and where they're supposed to be, but also things like verifying uh, how things are doing and mm -hmm. validating uh, not just maneuvers, but behavioral uh, operations as well. So we are looking at things in the future like check checking your health, um, sorry, like health verification. Yeah. And that kind of doctor's checkup on a satellite can tell you a ton of things that a, um, a an in-depth thermal analysis uh, from on-site can tell you a lot more than a uh, thermal junction can tell you, uh, or 10 of them can tell you. And uh, AI-based analysis on it that we've been testing out can also dig really deep into operational deviations, mm -hmm. uh, kind of from an analytical perspective. So there's a ton that we can enable with AI and uh, with that uh, kind of on-site perspective.